Wow, Hall of Fame. Do I retire now? <laughs> Is that what that means? I'm not quite sure. What an incredibly huge honour, Bronwyn, thank you so very, very much. Um, and it is particularly special to be receiving this honour in front of such an inspiring group of women assembled and honoured here today. Um, congratulations to all of you for your wonderful, wonderful achievements in all of your very diverse fields of endeavour. Uh, you all make a difference. And most importantly, you're all great role models for the next generation of young women as they rise up behind you and look around for a template of how to live a life of fabulous achievement and meaning. Keep going. I can assure you, even with everything you have achieved to this point, you still have so very much more fabulous ahead of you. And you know how I know this? because I bring, bring greetings from the other side, the other side of 40. <laughs> 40, yes, the F word. It's amazing to me what a bad rap the number 40 gets. I don't get it because I can tell you it is great over here. Think of the women I get to hang, or, hang out with. Asha Ketty, Kate Blanchett, Lee Sales, Ellen DeGeneres, Helen Mirren, Deborah Lee Finesse, Michelle Obama and the list, as you all know, just goes on and on and on. Every one of those women, fun, fearless, female and effing awesome. <laughs> Hashtag girl crush. And some of them are even that other F word, over 50. And yet for all of those remarkable examples of lives being lived with style, joy, wisdom, service, generosity, and let's face it, out and out hotness, I saw one report last week that said young women now think that they reach their prime at the age of 29. 29! Given we girls have a tendency to outlive our blokes these days and we mostly live until our mid-80s, that means we are going to spend two-thirds of our lives looking in the rear-view mirror. That is absolutely crazy. And I have to say, in receiving this award, I do feel very, very lucky. Lucky because one of the greatest pieces of advice I ever received was, find a job you love and you'll never work another day in your life. And that is exactly what happened to me. I'm lucky because as a 19-year-old aspiring journalist, I answered a tiny three-line ad in the women and girls employment section of the City Morning Herald that said, Dolly Magazine is looking for a secretary stroke editorial assistant stroke Girl Friday who is prepared to do absolutely anything. Phone Cathy on 699-3622. And I did. And to this day, it's the only job I've ever applied for. And I know that everything that has happened to me since, in what I freely admit is my extremely blessed career, has come from my passion for that job, answering the phones and making coffee at Dolly. And I feel particularly lucky as a woman to be living in a time when the mere idea of separating jobs into gender, women and girls and men and boys, is now so ridiculous, it's completely laughable. And on that note, um, there's been a lot of white noise in the media lately about who is and who isn't a feminist, and whether wanting an equal playing field for women constitutes whinging. We know that all of us here are the beneficiaries of passionate women who have gone before us and blazed a trail to make sure our path, our life choices, our job opportunities, our bodies, and the decisions that we make about them are ours and ours alone. But are we there yet? I'll let you decide. More than 40 years after legislation was passed making equal pay law, we still have an 18.2% gender pay gap. Every week in this country, one Australian woman is murdered in an act of domestic violence. And in a federal cabinet of 19, only one minister can currently use the ladies' loo. And she's braining it in her role, leaving the blokes for dead and currently the most popular politician in the country. 
Ironic much? Well, this is where you, the fun, fearless, fabulous females currently blazing a trail in this country, come in. This is where you decide whether near enough is good enough for Australian women. Or is, this, or is there still some work to be done? I have no doubt that you will all make the right choice. So as I stand here as the inaugural and very honoured recipient of Cosmo's Hall of Fame Award, exercising my pelvic floor muscles and rubbing the sprouting whiskers on my chin, what sort of advice can I pass on? Just a few things. Be a mentor, both personally and professionally, every day and on every single level you can. Gloria Steinem once said, every time a woman passes a mirror and criticises herself, there's a young girl watching. Embrace your work, but never let it define who you are. Embrace your mistakes, because they are the moments that define your future path. In fact, I've learnt so much from my mistakes over the years, I'm thinking of making a whole lot more. <laughs> Be brave. Travel lots. Read more. Give back. Be humble, laugh often, often at yourself when you can, and keep reaching for your personal mountaintop, whatever form that takes. And most importantly, when you get to your personal mountaintop, and I have no doubt that you all will, make sure you stop, you look around, and you enjoy that view. Thank you so much, I'm deeply honoured.